All right, this is Baldwin. I'm going to prove the binomial theorem again. I recorded it. It was a long recording, and then I realized I didn't have my screen adjusted right, and so I got to do it again. Maybe I'll be smoother this time. Here we go. The binomial theorem. And one of the ways of expressing is that a plus b to the n equals the sum from i equals 0 to n of n choose i, a to the n minus i, b to the i. So an example of that would be, make sure I'm recording. OK, good. <laughs> if I had a plus b to the 3, it would be 3 choose 0 a to the 3, b to the 0, plus 3 choose 1, a to the 2, b to the 1, plus 3 choose 2, a to the 1, b to the 2, plus 3 choose 3, a to the 0, b to the 3, which when you mess that up would be a to the 3rd plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. All right, so we're going to prove this. Proof by the principle of math induction. So there's two parts to the math induction. Part one, does it work for one? Does it work for n equal one? And part two, does working for k, n equal k force it to work for n equals k plus one? So here we go. Does it work for n equals one? Well, if n equals one, we have a plus b to the one, which is a plus b. And where n is 1 over here, we would have the sum from i equals 0 to 1 of 1 choose i, a to the 1 minus i, b to the i, which would be 1 choose 1, a to the 1, b to the 0. No, it's 1 choose 0, a to the 1, b to the 0, plus 1 choose 1, a to the 0, b to the 1, 1 choose 0 is 1, b to the 0 is 1, so 1 times 1 times a to the 1th is a plus. 1 choose 1 is 1, a to the 0 is 1, so 1 times 1 times b to the 1th is b. And notice that a plus b equals a plus b, so yes, it does work for n equals 1. Okay, part 2, does working for k force it to work for k plus 1? So does n equal k working force it so that n equals k plus 1 works. All right, so uh, we are going to first assume that it does work for n equal k. So we're going to say that a plus b to the k does in fact work for the sum of i equals 0 to k of k choose i a to the k minus i, b to the i. So now that we've established that it works for that, let's consider a plus b broken lead to the k plus 1. Well, that would be a plus b to the k times a plus b. So if I got k of them and I multiply it by another one of them, I got k plus one of them. Well, that dude right there we already know is this. So this crap times a plus b is this crap times a plus b. So that's going to be the sum from i equals 0 to k of k choose i, a to the k minus i, b to the i, all of that times a plus b. So, I'm going to replace this with an expanded version. So that's going to be, parentheses, k choose 0, a to the k, b to the 0, plus k choose 1, a to the k minus 1, b to the 1, plus k choose 2, a to the k minus 2, b to the 2, plus dot, dot, dot. Finally, towards the end, we're going to get a k choose k, 
a to the zero, b to the k, close parentheses, and stick in our a plus b. <clears throat> you can stop and rewind and rewrite and reanalyze anytime you want because it's a recording. Alrighty, now that means I can have all of this junk times a plus all of this junk times b. So I can multiply all this junk by a, and that will give me a k choose 0, a to the k, b to the 0, plus a k choose 1, a to the k minus 1, b to the 1, I should write more clearly, plus a k choose 2, a to the k minus 2, b to the 2, plus dot dot dot, plus a k choose k, a to the 0, b to the k, plus, now I'm going to do it with b's, b to k choose 0, a to the k, b to the 0, plus b, k choose 1, a to the k minus 1, b to the 1, plus b, k choose 2, a to the k minus 2, b to the 2, plus dot dot dot, plus b, k choose k, a to the 0, b to the k. You can see how important it is to have your summation crap together. All right, now we're going to combine like terms. So can you see that this term here has an a times a to the k, which is an a to the k plus 1, b to the 0 term? And look at the next one. a to the k minus 1 times a is a to the k, b to the 1. And over here is an a to the k, b to the 1. So this guy's by itself, these two mate, these two mate, the next two mate, the next two mate. So we're going to just go down the line. So the first one will be this dude right there. That's going to be equals k choose 0, a to the k plus 1, b to the 0. The next one will be this dude and this dude. So it's going to be plus k choose 1. a to the k minus 1 plus 1 is a to the k, b to the 1, added to k choose 0, a to the k, b to the 0 plus 1 is b to the 0. So see, those two terms are like terms. Like terms are the variables with their exponents are identical. If I go to the next two, we're going to get plus k choose 2, a to the k minus 1, b to the 2, and we're going to get a k choose 1, a to the k minus 1, b to the 2. That crap goes on forever. I'm going to do the last one and then the next last one. So the last one would be, this guy's all by himself, because I got a b to the k plus 1. The first group does not have a b to the k plus 1, so this guy's by himself. And that will be k choose k, a to the 0, b to the k plus 1. Am I still on the screen? Yeah, sort of. The one before that is going to be a... Yeah, look at that. I screwed up. The one before that will be a k choose k a to the 1, b to the k and a k choose k minus 1, a to the 1, b to the k. Okay. I'm staring at that for a second. Yeah, looking good. Okay. Now, we need to deal with all these pairs. The first guy and the last guy, the coefficients are 1. k to the 0 is 1, and k to the k is 1. So this guy is 1, a to the k plus 1, this last guy is 1, b to the k plus 1. It's all these pairwise guys in the middle that we're now going to deal with. So, in the middle of this proof, I have to do a side proof. And I will get back to that guy. Now, here's my side proof. Focus camera. Wow. Yeah, give me a second for the camera to focus. You knucklehead.
Okay, there we go. And this side proof is that n choose r plus n choose r minus 1 is going to give us n plus 1 choose r. So this is the proof I'm going to do. And in order to do that, I, I'm going to actually get this guy to what it, it's going to look like when I do it. So I want everybody to understand that um, if I have an n choose r, mathematically that's n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial. So in this form, this guy would be n plus 1 factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial. And uh, that's kind of where we're heading. Okay, so I have to do that. You look at this n choose r added to n choose r minus 1 fits these categories. k choose 1 plus k choose 1 minus 1. k choose 2, k choose 2 minus 1. So they're all in that format. And my point is to show that that's going to give me k plus 1. Choose whatever guy was on the bottom of the top guy. So here we go. I'm going to start with n choose r plus n choose r minus 1. That's going to give me n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial added to n factorial over r minus 1 factorial n minus r plus 1 factorial. So n minus the quantity r minus 1 is n minus r minus a negative 1, so it's n minus r plus 1 factorial. Now I have fractions I'm adding, so I need a common denominator. So I've got first one, n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial. I'm going to leave some space and add it to n factorial over r minus 1 factorial n minus r plus 1 factorial. Now, this guy is missing these guys, and this guy's missing those guys. So I have to multiply the top and bottom by that and that. I've got to multiply the top and bottom by that and that. So I'm just going to do that. r minus 1 factorial, r minus 1 factorial, n minus r plus 1 factorial, n minus r plus 1 factorial. r factorial, r factorial, n minus r factorial, n minus r factorial. Yeah, lead factorial. Okay, my handwriting sucks. Now, here's the other thing. I'm going to want an n plus 1 on the top. An n minus 1 factorial on the top. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. I'm going to need an n plus 1 factorial on the top. So, I'm going to right now, before I get too far along, stick them in legally. So, I'm going to go n plus 1 factorial n plus 1 factorial, n plus 1 factorial, n plus 1 factorial. Okie dokie. I, uh, I don't want the factorial. n plus 1, n plus 1, n plus 1, n plus 1. And here's why I don't need that factorial. I already got it n factorial times n plus 1 is n plus 1 factorial. I'll show you that real quick. n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times the next number down, which is n, times the next number down, which is n minus 1, times the next number down, which is n minus 2, times dot, 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 times 1. I claim that that is n plus 1 times, and then this part is just an n factorial. So notice that n factorial times n plus 1 gives us n plus 1 factorial. So I had an n factorial, so I stuck an n plus 1 with it, and those two together gives us an n plus 1 factorial. So I just multiply the top and bottom by n plus 1, multiply the top and bottom by n plus 1, and now our denominators are the same. They are n plus 1 
r factorial, n minus r factorial, r minus 1 factorial, n minus r plus 1 factorial. What we got on the top? Well, right here we have an n plus 1 factorial. We have that on both terms, right there, and there's n plus 1 factorial. So that would be times r minus 1 factorial, n minus r plus 1 factorial, plus r factorial, n minus r factorial. So there's our mess. Okay. <clears throat> r factorial is r times r minus 1 factorial. I got a reason for that. So here we go. n plus 1 factorial, r minus 1 factorial, n minus r plus 1 factorial, plus r times r minus 1 factorial. r factorial is r times r minus 1 factorial. And I got an n minus r factorial. And on the bottom, I got an n plus 1, r factorial, n minus r factorial, r minus 1 factorial, n minus r plus 1 factorial. Now, I can divide the top and bottom by n minus 1, fa r minus 1 factorial. There's an r minus 1 factorial and an r minus 1 factorial. So all the terms on the top have it. And the bottom has an r minus 1 factorial. So boom. Boom, boom. Let's clean that up just a hair more. n plus 1 factorial times n minus r plus 1 factorial plus r times n minus r factorial all over n plus 1 times r factorial times n minus r factorial times n minus r plus 1 factorial. Alrighty. <clears throat> See this n minus r plus 1 factorial and this n minus r factorial. n minus r plus 1 factorial is n minus 1. Blah, blah, blah. Try that again. n minus r plus 1 factorial is n minus r plus 1 times n minus r factorial. So I'm going to rewrite that guy. So n plus 1 factorial times n minus r plus 1 times n minus r factorial plus r times n minus r factorial all over n plus 1 r factorial n minus r factorial n minus r plus 1 factorial. Okay, n minus r factorial, and n minus r factorial, n minus r factorial, boom, 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 they're gone. That gives us n plus 1 factorial times n minus r plus 1 plus r is n minus r plus r plus 1, which is n plus 1, n plus 1. Downstairs, I got an n plus 1, an r factorial, and an n minus r plus 1 factorial. My n minus 1s die, giving us n plus 1 factorial over r factorial, n plus 1 minus r factorial, which is in the format for n plus 1 choose r which is the guy i was aiming to show so that part's done so here's the important part of that again you can go back and watch the recording k choose one times this stuff plus k choose zero times this stuff is turning out now to be k plus 1 choose 1 times this stuff. And k choose 2 times that stuff times k choose 1 times that stuff is really k plus 1 choose 2 of this stuff. So here's what we get. 
k2 0 is 1 a to the k plus 1 b to the 0 plus now this turns out to be k plus 1 choose 1 a to the k b to the 1 and this turns out to be k plus 1 choose 2 a to the k minus 1 b to the 2 plus dot 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 all the way to this last the second to the last guy which is plus k plus 1 choose k a to the 1 b to the k plus 1 times a to the 0 b to the k plus 1 well 1 is really k plus 1 choose 0 a to the k plus 1 b to the 0 this is k plus 1 choose 1 a to the k b to the 1 plus k plus 1 choose 2 a to the k minus 1 b to the 2 plus dot 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 all the way to the last guy which is a 1 which is k plus 1 choose k plus 1 a to the 0 b to the k plus 1 and as you can see that really is the sum from i equals 0 to k plus 1 of k plus 1 choose i a to the k plus 1 minus i b to the i which answers the question yes working for k does in fact force it to work for k plus 1 and so our proof is complete and accurate by the principle of math induction <coughs> All right, hopefully I got that one recorded correctly this time. <laughs> and let's see, yeah, recording was, how long was that? I don't see my timer. I got a timer on here somewhere. 22 minutes, some change, that's all right. Okay, let me know if I got a goof on there. <laughs>